take a triangle and let this be its circumcircle and let these be the tangent lines to the circumcircle at this vertex and this vertex of the triangle and let they intersect at this point here. Let this be the midpoint of this side of the triangle. We know that the red line here is the median of the triangle. The blue line from this vertex to this intersection point we're going to call the C median of the triangle. And why the C median? Because it turns out that the C median and the median are always isogonal conjugates with respect to the angle they come from in the triangle. So if this angle here is x and this angle here is y, let's prove that x equals y. Let's label the angles in the triangle alpha, beta, and gamma. Then, since this angle is x, this angle here is gamma minus x, and since this angle is y, this angle here is gamma minus y. From the alternate segments theorem, we know that this angle is gamma, this angle is alpha, this angle is gamma, and this angle is beta. Now, this triangle is isosceles since this angle equals this angle equals gamma, and therefore this length equals this length. Let's call this length m, then this length here is also m because this point is the midpoint of this side, and let's call this distance n, then this distance is also m. Let's apply the law of sines for this triangle and this triangle. Then we get that sine of gamma minus y divided by sine of y equals m divided by m times sine of alpha divided by sine of beta as given here. Now let's apply the law of sines for this triangle and this triangle. We get that sine of gamma minus x divided by sine of x equals n divided by n times sine of this angle divided by sine of this angle but we know that this angle is alpha, so this angle is 180 minus alpha, and this angle is beta, so this angle is 180 minus beta. And so it is times sine of 180 minus alpha divided by sine of 180 minus beta, as given here. Now we can cancel out the m's here and the n's here, and notice that sine of 180 minus alpha equals sine of alpha, and sine of 180 minus beta equals sine of beta. Therefore, sine of gamma minus x over sine of x equals sine of alpha over sine of beta, which equals sine of gamma minus y over sine of y. So we get this equality here. Finally, from this equality, we can conclude that cotangent of x equals cotangent of y. And since x and y are between 0 and 180 degrees, then x equals y. This means that the median and the sim median in a triangle are always isogonal lines with respect to this angle. Here's the optional problem. We have a triangle. The blue line is its median with respect to this vertex and let the sim median intersect the circumcircle of the triangle at this point. Take the Simpson line of this point with respect to this triangle, that would be this line, where this here is 90 degrees, this here is 90 degrees, and this here is 90 degrees. Then prove that this point is the midpoint of this red segment. In other words, prove that this length equals this length. And here's the solution. A good thing to know about the median in a triangle with angles alpha and beta is that if you take the ratio of the sine of this angle divided to the sine of this angle, you're going to get the ratio of the sine of alpha to the sine of beta. Just apply the law of sines to this triangle and to this triangle, you're going to see how this length cancels out with this length, and what's left is sine alpha divided by sine of beta. In the case of the sim median, for example here, we get that sine of gamma minus x divided by sine of x, as indicated in the picture, equals sine of alpha over sine of beta. So if this here was a median, we would have got sine of gamma minus x over sine of x equals sine of beta over sine of alpha. But because it's not a median, it's a sim median, we get the opposite. Sine of gamma minus x over sine of x equals sine of alpha over sine of beta. From the law of sines, we get that this length is 2r times sine of x. And this length here is 2 times r times sine of gamma minus x, where r is the radius of this circle. Now note that this point and this point lie on the circle with diameter this segment because of the 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here. Similarly, this point and this point lie on the circle with diameter this segment because of the 90 degree angles here and here. Therefore, the diameter of the circle around these four points is 2r sine of gamma minus x and the diameter of the circle around these four points is 2r sine of x. Now from this cyclic quadrilateral, we get that if this angle is beta, then this angle is beta. And from this cyclic quadrilateral, we get that if this angle is alpha, then this angle is 180 minus alpha, so this angle is alpha. Now we can apply the law of sines for this triangle, and then we get this side equals the diameter of this circle 
which is 2r sine of gamma minus x times the sine of beta, this angle. And we can apply the law of sines to this triangle, where this segment equals the diameter of this circle, which is 2r sine of x times the sine of this angle, sine of alpha. So we need to prove that 2r sine of gamma minus x sine of beta equals 2r sine of x sine of alpha. But we can take this equality that we proved and we can cross multiply and then we get the sine of gamma minus x times sine of beta equals sine of x times sine of alpha, which is written here. And this multiplied by 2r is exactly what we need to prove here, that 2r sine x sine alpha equals 2r sine of gamma minus x sine beta.